So welcome everybody to tonight's Animal and Emotions webinar. I'm Cindy Myers. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about something upcoming that's not through me. That's not one of my events, but I thought y'all might be interested. In. I know I'm I'm uh, one of i one of the presenters. My tongue tongue is not working today. <laughs> not a good sign. <laughs> Fortunately for this uh, other event, it was pre-recorded, so I, I, I could take different cuts. <laughs> uh, and, and the presentations are already live, although uh, there will be some live events at it. And so I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but I'm really quite excited that I got to be accepted into the symposium. And it's, gonna, it's, it's just very exciting that... Uh, animal communication, interspecies communications is getting to the level of academia and real research. So this is good stuff. So I encourage anybody that's interested in participating, listening to some of the talks, I'm sure they're gonna be really interesting. But for tonight, and also tonight, we'll talk a little bit about your own animals and their emotions. Um, but before I do that, if you're experiencing medical emergency, please call your veterinarian. But what I can do is provide energy support and release any trapped emotions, anxiety uh, in your pet that can make healing more challenging. Uh, and it can be very beneficial to your pet uh, overcoming whatever medical situation they're facing. And also, if you have an aggressive animal, uh, that isn't my strong suit. I, I will be full disclosure there. So I do insist that you have a certified dog trainer with you because it's not just enough to release the trapped emotions. And we can talk about that more later, too. But it's it's really because a habit has been created out of the aggression quite often. So you really need to work with your pet not only to remove the trapped emotions, but the big job is then to retrain what they we want them to do because that anxiety still can kick in and the aggression can come back. Even if they get some relief for a short term, uh, it can build back up and then you have another problem. So we need to retrain the habit that comes with it. And I'm not a certified trainer. So having an expert in aggression is really key. Um, as I was talking, mentioning this, we're going to talk a little bit about the symposium. And, and what's been fun is uh, I have an alpaca farm and I've been teaching more classes lately on animal communication, interspecies communication. So, uh, but we're using my alpacas even on Zoom. You know, I don't bring them in the house and have them on the camera, but um, you get to practice reading them. And it's been a really a lot of fun being able to integrate my farm life with my intuitive energy and teaching people. I was teaching uh, live be prior to pandemic, but uh, adapting and finding out that we can use them on Zoom, it has opened up folks from all over uh, the country and the world to be able to participate in this class. And so far, knock on wood, we've had 100% success in, those, in this class. So it's been a, a lot of fun. So keep an eye out on future classes on doing that. And we're working on uh, hopefully, probably not this summer, but maybe fall. My goal is to have a destination class where we invite folks. You can come and learn on the animals here. So uh, some of the things that are happening in my world right now. But I wanted to talk about this <clears throat> international multi-species uh, symposium. Uh, they really the topic is on intu intuitive interspecies communication, and I, I submitted a um, a paper on it, and they accepted it. Uh, and it's actually a, a talk. I recorded it on Zoom, and and it's live now, so you can actually sign up and start watching some of the other presentations now. It's organized out of the University of Saskatchewan. And um, for those of you that have registered, uh, I'll send you the link to it. And I'll have, uh, I'll, I'll get it put up on my website too, in the next day or two for those that are listening uh, on the recording. 
but it's really very cool that the an university um, and the University of Saskatchewan is uh, has one of the I believe they only have two vet schools in Canada and it's one of them so this is a serious not a fly-by-night university this is real serious uh, academia uh, presentations and papers from both the scientific world that are providing um, their findings but also folks like myself that are are uh, that do the work in the field. I'm not an academic type, but uh, they were interested, very interested in um, the work that, that I do with animals all over the place because uh, I have clients all over the world as well. And my topic is actually uh, the universal language of grief. And I found that all, all the species that I've worked with, uh, I, I, I have to admit that I haven't worked with a lot of reptilians, but all the uh, species that I've worked with ha have the emotion of grief. And it's very intense and strong emotion, just like it is with us, different than us, slightly different, but it is very intense. And so I came up with five case studies in which I worked with uh, animals and or humans regarding their pets and, and the grieving process or the grieving emotion and I took different, uh, each case has a slightly different perspective in how my communication with the animal was able to help. A couple cases where the animal had crossed already, and then there were some where the animal was experiencing the grief uh, or the human was experiencing the grief and how communicating with the animal has helped them in those different situations. So <clears throat> uh, that's my topic in it. And uh, again, I'm very excited that Again, the real university is doing research on people like moi. I, I, I sometimes I've always kind of been interested in someday having somebody put those little probes in my head to see what happens when I'm communicating with animals because I, I, I'd just be so curious to see what lights up in my brain. Uh, it's, it's not. I don't believe it's it's it's. We used to call it such woo-woo stuff, but I th there's real stuff happening in the brain that we just don't understand. The brain is such an amazing, or to me, that's the final frontier is learning how the brain works. Is It is one of the most amazing organs and designs ever created. And what it's capable of doing, we've barely scratched the surface of. And, and studying how intuitives work is would just open up a whole new world. We worry about artificial intelligence. It's like, it should just look at our own brain <laughs> and just work on it instead of these little chips. <clears throat> what we can do is way more, uh, I think way more cool, but that's my opinion. Anyway, let's talk to you about emotions and how they get trapped in, in your, anim your pets or animals' uh, bodies and how it can impact them. And remember, emotions are just chemicals that the body creates to relate to an experience it's having. And, and the ones that get, tend to get trapped are fear-based emotions. The, the happier emotions are higher frequency, so they tend to flow. And it's kind of like a whole food. It just digests easier and, and is re released easier. Whereas the slower moving ones, because the lower frequency move, emotions they move slower so they tend to it's easier for them to get stuck in our body and they can be really strong as well i think the only one that i've really said is of a happier uh of higher frequency emotion is overjoy and I'm, and our pets can get that too where they just get so much adrenaline because they're so excited overexcited <clears throat> That, that those can get trapped, but it's it's rare. It's usually a fear-based anxiety, depression, sadness, uh, uh, unsupported, abandonment. Any, those are very common. Grief, again, is our big ones that our pets and our animals experience that tend to get stuck. And when they get stuck, it does one of two things, and it can do both. It can create a, a habit, uh, a behavioral issue, or it can create a, a physical problem because they're actual chemicals that 
gets stuck in the body. And so now the natural flow can't get to those areas that it's stuck. It acts like a, a dammed area. So you think of a boulder that's blocking part of the river. It The river, the water has to go around it. It can't go through the boulder. And so whatever's happening, maybe not right there where the boulder exists, but uh, you know, where it goes around, it erodes this, the, um, the river banks, right? And so kind of like that with, with the trapped emotions, that flow of energy is going around that boulder of trapped emotions and it can weaken the area, not only where the boulder is, but behind it as it's flowing. So it can create physical issues as well. And so we want to get rid of those trapped emotions so that it can help uh, ease the behavior that's created by it, but also uh, help with any of the physical issues. It's really good for if you have a senior animal that has arthritis and some of those uh, aches and pains that some of us all get to experience as we get a little older and removing those trapped emotions can, it may not get rid of, it won't get rid of the arthritis necessarily, but it can ease the discomfort greatly. So it can provide a lot better quality of life as, as the senior pets age. Uh, so one of the first things I always do with a pet when I first start to communicate actually with them is to release some of the trapped emotions. And after they feel a little better, they start to communicate and give me pictures or a, a, a phrase or something that they would like to share with you. But they really like to start with this release of the trapped emotion. It, it really helps um, the connection better with me. So I really like to clear the trapped emotions to start with. <clears throat> and there's a few things you can do. I always like to give you something to do for your tip. And one of the easiest things that you can do is just breathe. So if you see your pet is anxious, or even if they're not, <laughs> just spend time. It helps you, it helps them. But if you breathe fully, uh, that can help calm them. If you take them to the vet and they're anxious, if you're anxious, that's just going to exacerbate the situation because they're picking up your anxiety. And even if you're saying, it's okay, it's okay, there's nothing to worry about, we're fine. They're not believing you because you're not breathing fully, you're breathing shallow and they're picking up your worry. So it's important if you can do, slow your breathing down and be calm yourself and then tell them the same thing that they're okay you might have a better shot of believing you. Uh, but, and it will also give them comfort. They'll come and lean up to you more closely because that energy feels a whole lot better than the anxiety around them. Uh, our words matter in what we share with them. I like to think it to them as opposed to saying it out loud. They hear it better, especially if they're in the fear brain. Um, so I like to use um, positive phraseology. So instead of saying, don't, don't, be afraid. I say, you're safe. We want to tell them exactly what we want them to experience. For my alpacas, like they were just a while ago, before I started this webinar, I fed them and there were a couple that were spitting at each other. And I was like, I, I wanted to say, don't spit. <laughs> but that would have encouraged them to spit. They don't hear the negative. They would have spat more. So I said, keep, swallow that. <laughs> we're about to have pellets. You're going to eat pellets. Swallow it. <laughs> because it makes their mouth taste nasty if they start spitting with each other and they don't enjoy their pellets. And I, and it was very important. It's cold today and I sheared uh, a couple, uh, less than two weeks ago. So they're really cold. So having these pellets was really, really important for them. So it wasn't just a, a nicety. It was really important that they not uh, get into a fight. So a spit fight with each other. So I was really clear with them about you know, keep that in your mouth. You need to have your pellets tonight. You need to eat full, your full meal. So, <clears throat> so I kept that phraseology very positive with them on what exactly I wanted them to do. And the other thing is when their pet is anxious or if they were like my guys, they were a little <laughs> upset. I put out, I, I thought of peace and calm. And if I send that out as I'm breathing fully, that also, it's a very nice frequency, and they absorb that. So they have a, they may may more likely choose that calming energy versus the 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 anxious energy. Again, you know, when my males, when I had a couple of males in the pasture together, if they started getting in a tussle with each other, instead of saying "Don't fight," 
I just sent out peace and calm. And I would say nine times out of 10, especially if I caught it early, they stopped immediately because that energy feels so much better than the negative emotion of the fight. So they calmed right down. So if you do that, and if you're with your dogs and cats or your horses and you're breathing and you uh, breathe nice and slow and fully and do a light petting with them, you know, a light stroke, that really works also in calming them down. So if you have an anxious pet, breathe fully, do a light touch, just really light, gentle, very, very light, not a massage, do it very, very light. It works at a different level than the massaging. The actual massaging can sometimes trigger more adrenaline, <laughs> believe it or not, even a nice, it can get them more excited sometimes. And we don't want that. Adrenaline is adrenaline. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a fun adrenaline or uh, a scared adrenaline, it's the same chemical. And we don't want them to have that. We want the calming chemicals. So the lighter touch, uh, the lighter petting triggers the calming system versus the adrenaline system. So you want to do the light touch and breathe. And one last thing, just, just in, take a few minutes uh, <clears throat> and, and turn everything else off. And for like two minutes, just spend time looking in your, your pet's eyes, petting them and loving on them, smiling and full, with your full heart, they pick that up and they return it tenfold. So it's a win-win. I love win-win. I just love win-win. And so if I give them my full love, oh my gosh, it's just, it just fills my heart up even more full by uh, when I give it to them, they give it right back and you can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their body language and, and it just makes the rest of the day go so much better. I can have be having the worst day and if I take those two minutes and just spend time loving on them, I, I feel like I've, I'm a new person when I'm done. So we can use our pets to help us, but it also benefits them in that way. So if you're um, needing some support and getting rid of some of these trapped emotions, like I said, it's great if you have some senior pets that we want to do more palliative care and do maintenance on them and just kind of keep that discomfort at bay so that you have as best quality of life you can get. Then this quick cleanse package is perfect for them. You get three 15-minute phone call of phone sessions with me where I can, I can get a lot done in 15 minutes. I can clear that trapped emotions, rebalance their energy, communicate with them and really support their body and healing and feeling so much better. And uh, it's really effective. So you, I encourage you to check that out. And again, animals don't have a very long attention span. So 15 minutes, we can get a lot accomplished. Uh, I, I only listed a, a couple things. I meant to list one other thing on here, but um, <clears throat> we have, well, actually, I got the right amount. <laughs> There's no healing circle Saturday, but what I do have is Monday is my Heal the Healers group. I got to come up with a better name for that because it gets confused with the healing circle. But in the meantime, until I come up with a better name, I have this new group that's called Heal the Healers group. It's, it's different than our guided meditation group. This group, um, we work on, I, I provide you an experiential kind of activity in which we bypass your fear brain and uh, get into your subconscious and it really taps into your authentic self and helps really get you grounded. And um, as I like to talk about for folks, it's it helps you find and stay focused on your your true north. So if, you, if life feels like it's overwhelming and you're giving to everybody and just really exhausted and you know, overwhelmed by, by life and by giving to others all the time, we can get easily off our north, true north, when we get into that state. So we want to bypass that and get you refocused to your true north. And that can really help you even with all those other things, distractions going on in your life that can just get you regrounded and refocused and, and help you deal with those things in a more um, streamlined or efficient, effective way. So that's Monday. We've been starting doing the Monday evenings. They're on the fourth Monday of the month. So the next one coming up is 
that Monday. Should have deleted the, uh, we did have the animal communication class. Um, uh, that was the last class. We'll have another one soon. And then the next next Wednesday is the heal, uh, a healing circle where we'll do the guided meditation. And of course, we'll do one immediately after this webinar. If you have any questions, we'll get to that. Uh, let me stop this share because somebody did a chat. Oh, Sonny talked about t contacting a doctor that has does these brain scans. Um, <clears throat> I might I might check that out. But anyway, it'd be fun if the university did any of those. Um, any other questions? I I did get your some of your pets photos. Let's see, Michelle. Uh, I got your. Unless anybody has a question on anything. Uh, Michelle, if you can unmute yourself, I have Rin. Yes. Okay, let me share Rin here. Here's Rin. How can I help you with Rin? He is brand new. We adopted him from the shelter about a little over a month. And actually, he had his first training, uh, obedience type training yesterday, but he um we know nothing about him and he reacts it weirdest things like we have two chickens and i thought for sure that you know he's going to murder these chickens as soon as they run away from him but he's fine with them he doesn't even look at him twice but when somebody comes into our house he just goes crazy and he it's like he he's super protective of our house Mm. Um, and that's why we're, we, we got the professional to help us with that. And actually just one appointment yesterday really helped. They helped, you know, me figure out how to handle him and how to, uh, allow him to approach new people. Cause he was coming up and he wasn't biting, but he was nipping. And some, some of the nips were pretty strong and, you know, I, we can't have that. We have friends that have pets and people that come over and things like that. And I want him just to be a, uh, um, you know, part of our family. We've always had labs and they're just super easy. <laughs> and so he's, he's like a, a complete unknown. Yeah. Okay. Again, that's a, I'm so glad that you have a trainer. Keep using the trainer. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause that this is trainers key. working wonders. Yeah. That is key. And that will help him as well. Teach him the rules. Exactly. He, he needs to understand the rules because he's kind of making it up as he goes. And that's part of the anxiety <laughs> <clears throat> and being, it uh, looks like a kind of a shepherd mix of some sort that is, can yeah. be, you know, they can be territorial and very protective of the, of his family and his space. So you definitely want to get him to know the uh, the routine when people come in you know whatever your trainer tells you how to do it consistency is usually also key in whatever you do with that so uh, especially with shepherds if you change the rules it wigs them out okay um and and with a dog where we don't know his background at all the change is going to be hard for him yeah uh, and it is He's, he's yeah. getting better, but it's... Yeah, it's everything is overwhelming. They can yeah. be a little autistic-like in <laughs> yeah. that everything new is... It's one it's different where we might see things generalize on something. Uh, to them, it's a brand new thing. And so then I have to learn it all. And, and for him, if it's new and it's in his turf, then I need... A, a, that's a threat. So... Just be aware of that. Hope it it can become generalized with practice. So the more that once you get uh, the routine and with your working with your trainer on how to greet people and new things coming to the house and looking to you to say, it's cool, <laughs> go to your safe spot or whatever it is that you're doing, um, he, that will that hopefully will ease off. Uh, and he'll be able to generalize not not that every new person that comes to the house is going to be the scary monster thing. So, right. um, but that takes time. And again, real consistency is coming in that really loud that he needs really clear direction. 
Okay. And so even if you put things on a verbal command, like to go to your pillow and somebody comes in, or you just need him to go chill out, and that's your thing is to send him to his pillow to chill out. Whatever it is, whatever you use for that phrase to, to go to his pillow, it always has to be the same phrase. Okay. That's an example. All right. So just real clear directions. And also I'm getting from him that when you're calm, it's way better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, if you get upset, you know, because you get frustrated with them or angry, that you're just going to have a negative, you'll go into a negative feedback loop with him. That that will get him more anxious and you'll get the opposite. Yep. So, learn that. so yeah. learning to get quieter yourself, <laughs> which can All be right. hard uh, at times when you're like, I can't believe you just went in the trash again or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Or but, nipped my friend. Or nipped <laughs> you your know? friend. Yeah. It's like uh, you, you have to get really quiet with him uh, and but firm, but also firm. And again, clear directions. And hopefully you'll be able to read his language from him. So you we're can starting to, yeah. You yeah. can circumvent it before it happens. Because I suspect he's it, it can be fast, but he's probably giving you a signal ahead of time that he's about to do something, his ears pinned back or something like that. Yep. Uh so if you see that, you need to step in quickly and manage it. Uh so the, it's not just his training, it's yours. <laughs> on yep, one. I've learned that. <laughs> on learning exactly what to do in the second. And, but it's it'll be effective because he's smart. He's very smart. Oh, he's and, a good boy. Yeah. And and he need he just needs that guidance and then clear guidance. And that can help reduce his anxiety with okay, great. really clear instructions from you and All consistent right. ones. Or whatever the rules are. Right. The learn rules. them. And it's so, okay. And but he does need a job. Oh, so, okay. Oh, uh, he's a working dog, so he kind of ah. uh, a job to do. Uh, so redirect because he has that strong, uh, protective energy. Um, you want him to redirect it somewhere. It All can right. be, you know, when you leave, you can watch, watch watch the chickens <laughs> you know you're in yeah, charge right? of the chickens uh you're okay. in charge of your toy uh stuff like that but okay. you can find him a, a job to do a job okay um and also you know I, we all sometimes do need <laughs> there's times when it's like good boy now's the time i want you to growl and look ferocious and so you're we right. always <laughs> want it to be a punishment because uh, you know I I like having a, a a guardian dog sometimes if somebody a little scary comes to my house right uh and so I don't always it's not a punishment uh, at times it's like good watchdog yeah it's a good okay. job watching over um, but I have it on command when you to say that's enough okay very cool. Uh, I see this. Oh, yeah, there was something outside, and uh, okay, I checked it out. All's good. So, right. uh, there's times when it's okay for him to be a good watchdog. Um, okay. But again, it's it, it you it that will take a little time. But as he as you get consistent on some of the, and you can work with your trainer of saying, well, how do I tell him that's enough? <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, like so you said, that, I'm, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. But those are things to do with him on, uh, again, and I put a hand signals. I use hand signals. He might, uh, pick up hand signals faster. Okay. He's very, uh, uh, wired into body language. Okay, great. Yeah. I so, noticed that. So your body language in doing stuff and stepping in when there's somebody, you know, talk to yeah. the trainer. Hopefully they understand body language really well. Because uh, dogs communicate, animals as a whole communicate. One of their biggest way of communicating to each other is through body language. They, it's not all verbal. Right. Verbal is is actually one of the lower 
um, communications. They have a few verbal communication types in, in speaking using their vocalizations, but they use their body language a lot. So learning to use our body language to communicate um, or to create, uh, instead of having just verbal commands, I would learn, I, he will learn faster using a hand signal than your voice signals. Okay. And that can be faster and easier for you to remember to be consistent. So right. if you create your own hand signal type things, uh, it's, you know, to go someplace or down, sit, whatever. Well, again, but just be consistent with whatever your hand signals are. He will pick that up faster than yeah. you saying sit down, behave, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, stop exactly. Biting. Stop biting. And again, right. uh, we don't want to say stop biting. <laughs> if you do right. say stuff like that, because they hear biting, you want to say, um, keep your mouth to yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Keep your mouth closed. Okay. Um, that's what they'll hear more clearly than no bites, is that they hear bites. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that, okay. Yeah. You want me to bite? All right. But that also creates that confusion. Okay. Because you're picturing you're picturing something and you say no bites, you're picturing biting. <laughs> and they're going, oh, okay, I'll bite. Right, right. If it's you're picturing like mouth closed, yes. So if I'm picturing mouth closed, you know, if you say and say it, both outside your outside voice and your inside voice, you're picturing something very different. Right. And very clear. Very clear. So let me clear uh, some of the anxiety. I'm already starting to get some nice shifting energy off of him because he's, he's the one communicating this to you, by the way. Is? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's I'm channeling him and interpreting what he, he needs from you. Okay, great. His personality and how he's wired. Not not all dogs are wired the exact same way. So this is how he's wired. I don't know if he'll tell me anything in his back. His neck is a little out. Oh. Uh it's very tight. It can it makes sense in that um uh, they carry their anxiety quite often in the withers. Okay. So um, look up, look up um, T touch for dogs, and it's T T O U C H. And there's YouTube's. There are YouTube's for that modality and how to do a gentle touch. Uh, and and it's, it'll be important to try and do that, especially uh, on his in well all over, but that wither area because oh, he's, carrying, okay. he's carrying so much anxiety in that and that's mm -hmm. you know how they raise their hackles when they get upset and mad yeah or, or aggressive um so that energy is cut in theirs and we want to calm that down so that's a very calming modality he may be agitated by it at first so we don't want to do that so you want to go to an area that that is feels good so on his chest, if he likes his ears done, anything that he likes, you want, but you want to get to the point where he'll let you do in the areas that might be more sensitive. Okay. And, and that just takes time, but we want to create that um, calming energy with him as much as you can. That too can help with that uh, anxiety that he feels, especially when people come. Yeah. You can get him back into a calmer state faster. Um it pulls them out of that anxious state really fast, usually. Um, but work, work that the tail, the withers area, uh, but also, yeah, the tail area a lot. Um, yeah, uh, because the tail also is a huge communication device for them. Up, uh, you know, if it's tucked under their legs, that shows anxiety. Uh, we want to build the confidence. So if you're doing those T touches down the tail you're relaxing okay. it but you can actually move the tail and i think you might find that sometimes his tail gets really tight it because, does because he's yeah. carrying the anxiety <laughs> in it so you want to actually take the whole the whole tail and gently very gently just do the circle in a quarter you can do it a, 
one way and then go the other way. But we okay. want to work it. And then you switch back and just do the T touches all around his bum area and down the tail. Again, if he shows any sign of this is freaking me out, stop, go to a place where he feels more comfortable and build towards it. Okay. Uh, but hopefully he'll like it a lot. They tend to. It's, at, you know, it's sometimes they just like it better in certain parts of the body. But when you stop, and I never, and I don't ever push the T touches on them unless I'm in a crisis mode. So just if they're, if you, I swap back and forth, petting and doing some T touches, petting and some T touches. And if you do that, you're not only creating a Pavlovian response, but you're communicating with them. So if they get up and walk away, instead of forcing them to do it, you're listening. And, right. and, and that's increasing your bond. And right. since right now, we also want to really work on your bonding with him. Yes. He's new in your household. So the teeth yep. touch will uh, increase that bond with you really fat, much faster. Okay, great. Yeah, because he's bonded okay. with my husband, but not me. <laughs> ah, so that will help you. That's okay. interesting. So he's, uh, uh, he, he might have been with a male before. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, this is great, wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And Rin thanks you too. <laughs> yeah. Lynette, can I do anything else for you, Matt? Abandonment. Oh. Sorry, Matt. That help. Oh, it just got hot. <laughs> okay. So that was a big release. Uh and is this his forever home? Yes. Okay, let me tell him that. Okay, he was not a he wasn't sure of that. So, really? Oh. Yeah. Well, when they, you know, are know. coming from a rescue background, that yeah. you know, there's a wariness that I don't want to give my full heart to folks until in case I yes. have to get ripped from you. So oh. having knowing that that this is his forever home, he can bond with you more quickly now. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, Jen, you sent me two pictures. Do you have a preference, Jen? Uh, can you unmute yourself? There. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> um, maybe the um, the two additions, the um, horse and the black dog, are new to us, and just uh, I'm wondering if there's anxiety or. Um, what's going on there so the horse is new to you as well mm -hmm. well let's try the horse we don't get horses as often all right so let's try and what is your horse's name mocha mocha okay mm -hmm. is, is a mocha exhibiting any anxiety or anything sometimes yeah mm -hmm. i think it's like also from my daughter because she has anxiety and so when they kind of feed off of each other a little bit Okay. Okay. Well, that means they are meant for each other. They have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, uh, look up tea touches. <laughs> okay. That will help your horse and your daughter uh, if she learns how to do that for him. And the <laughs> modality was actually created for horses. Oh, nice. Uh, Linda Tellington Jones is who created the modality, and she's an, uh, an amazing uh equine person so uh there's a lot on her site about horses and tea touch i'll have to look it up uh, <clears throat> but it's very good because when they get anxious again <clears throat> they get uh, a little out of their body <laughs> they, they mm -hmm. forget that they have a body sometimes uh, and i think that's mocha's problem sometimes he kind of mm -hmm. forgets where his not sure where his body is so do they do jumping together is that what they mm -hmm. do yes uh it, it, oh, that's kind of interesting he too seems to need clear instructions oh. uh so and sometimes there's some mixed signals happening from the writer, I guess. Um, Probably, yeah. 
Because she's learning. learning. Because she's learning. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell him that, that she's learning. She's not an expert yet, that you need to learn together. Do you know the people that had him previously? No, mm -mm, not directly. I, From what I understand, he was with a very good rider prior and okay. my daughter outgrew her previous horse. And so that's why we okay. got this horse. And so she, that's, that's part of it then. Cause mm -hmm. he, he, the previous rider kind of knew how to do things a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he was also used, used to this other rider. So that's part yeah. of the confusion is they, everybody kind of has their own style of things too. And so he's kind mm -hmm. of a little confused about what she wants <laughs> me to mm -hmm. do. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of telling him that he can be the teacher to her sometimes and be patient. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Patient. And that he, because he had a really good writer before, that, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so he's a, also a little nervous about her becoming a really good writer. Because then she doesn't need him anymore. Uh, I don't think they'll outgrow each other. I think this is going to be it for her. Like, she really um, Yeah. Okay, so... I'll, I'll communicate that to him. Okay, that, that was a nice shift. And I'm going to tell him you get to grow together and he gets to be more the teacher on this with your daughter yeah. at times and help her with her anxiety. That's great. So I'm releasing his anxiety. I also get that he can be kind of goofy and playful. Is that yes, true? he is very loving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that he's not, not so showing me his lips and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that he likes certain a certain treat of some sort. Well, he loves treats in general, so I'm not quite sure yet what his favorite is. We're still really getting to know him. Uh, it's probably since on the December. sweeter side, so either apples or something mm -hmm. that's on the sweeter side. He kind of will smack in his lips a little over that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you'll do fine. Uh, at least the anxiety and the confusion he had on what's, what's up. The, just understanding that that she would said she's more of a novice that helped because he mm -hmm. didn't he didn't you know his experience was well well all writers should know how to do this and now mm -hmm. I'm used to, you're asking me to do that and I didn't think that's how you did it <laughs> 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 or your body you know I, I'm not a jumper and I not I don't ride horses so I, I just can imagine there's a, a flow to everything and timing is so important yeah. so if you're off timing that can really uh, confuses the horse and so yes and he gets angry about it like impatient he's not yeah he was frustrated with her mm -hmm. so yeah uh, I think explaining that he needs to be patient and help teach her he kind of went oh <laughs> 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 so see if that doesn't help with that okay was, <clears throat> yeah. uh, our animals are kind of funny they don't understand that we we humans are not all the same either. <laughs> <laughs> you got to learn something different. Uh, let me go to the other person. If we have time, we'll come back to your dog. If that's okay. okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, so uh, Karen, let's talk to princess. You can unmute. And if you look at uh, Karen's, I, if you see her uh, profile, uh, it, that's his princess on her profile. I didn't get a, another photograph so if you can see the profile beautiful saint bernard so uh karen you said that uh before we got started uh, a little while ago you said that uh you had a big thunderstorm and princess got a little scared so, uh, 
And again, uh, remind me, she, she, you rescued her as well? We did in 2019 from a couple that was 90 years old. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to... What the, besides running to the basement, does she exhibit other... Does her eating go off when she gets really scared? Not except for this last time when we took the trip. And we don't okay. know if it was because she had bit her tongue when I had nudged her accidentally. Or if she was afraid because we hadn't traveled since COVID. Um, right. It seems like there were a lot of different factors there where she went on a hunger strike for over five days. Okay. So uh, I think that was more trip related than anything and well combo of the storm than the trip uh this one i was just curious if she went back off feed because of this fierce storm no no she did okay fine. that's that's good uh because that would be other information if she i don't want it to create a habit that when she gets scared she stops eating no i think she's feeling safe at home with mom and dad so i think the yeah. trip was too much yep no Okay, so that's just good information for future trips that we definitely want to uh, help her through that. Absolutely. Oh, so I'm going to release some fear and panic from the storm. Uh, and I think uh, you were right that when she was at their previous home, she didn't have a place to hide in storms? No, she was tied to a barn door. And yeah. I don't, she so, could kind of go in and out, but she was too close to the weather. Yeah. So she just wanted to run and hide and find a safe place and she couldn't. So those storms are really scary for her. So good she has a, a, a safe place where she can go to. And again, the tea touches are perfect for that. It may not stop the anxiety while the storm is happening, but it can pull them out faster from the anxiety. So okay. as soon as the storm is over or even during the storm, you can pull them out by doing the tea touches. Okay. So look those up. Okay. So all of you folks that are in it, that's a really great modality. I'm not certified in it, but it's just a really great, tool to put in your toolbox that's something you can do to help your pet in the moment when they're anxious then i'm the expert that can remove the trapped emotions that were created during the storms so we'll release all of that for her how you feel she's feeling much better and there's a nice shift of her energy and she's hoping that tomorrow we can play a game <laughs> <laughs> She's been playing a lot since we got home. <laughs> yeah, she's enjoying that. So she's looking forward to, because I think you guys are Eastern time. So she's. Oh, no, we're, we're Central, but. Central. Well, it's, you're probably not settling in for the evening and yes, playtime is yeah. not, not happening. So she's. Yeah, no, she came into the bedroom and laid down as soon as she heard your voice. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put more more things to sleep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is there any re residual that has happened or has continued since she got home that we need to still address? Um, I cleared quite a bit of that out while you were gone. Let's just see. There's there's always more. It feels more from her past that needs to be released. Okay. That I think the people kind of loved her. They just, I don't think she just got a lot of attention when they're 90 years old. There's probably not a lot of attention. No, she was put on a back porch. She wasn't even allowed in the house. Yeah. So there's a, there's loneliness that I'll clear abandonment so even the abandonment was while she was still with them and confusion on why nobody would love her she gets lots of love in this house yeah she's soaking it up she, she knows the difference she 
that I think that's why she wigged out so badly when you left was because it it's it even though the people were nice it just it it, it really upset her to think that it was it was too much like being in in the other place okay and she's so attached to you guys so that the idea of being taken from you was too scary yeah understandable yeah you know there's all there might all, always be that attachment issue uh, i can't say the more that you go off and do things the easier it is it's not always a true statement again dogs our pets don't think that way they're more um event driven or in the moment driven uh, so and they don't necessarily associate this trip as the same as the next trip. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it can, you know, the more that you go and come home, go and come home, even on just to the grocery store, this, the, the idea, and you can think it to her, wait, what you're going to do. Okay. And I always tell them, even when I go on my trips, because I don't go out of town very often anymore myself, but I tell my, my animals that I always come home to them. So uh, I think that helps them understand that, yeah, I'm going to be gone for a few nighttime sleeps, but I always come home to you. Okay, because so. I am actually going to Orlando on Sunday and coming back on Friday. So And are you? Um, not my husband. He'll be home. Okay, I, so it, is, it be should be better. Uh, sometimes an, uh, an animal that's more bonded to the person that is going out of town and they wake out. I have one client whose dog doesn't care he's so bonded to the uh, the mom <laughs> that the <laughs> others are barely adequate <laughs> in the household oh, <laughs> and, and he has massive temper tantrums and stops eating he goes on hunger strikes even at home in his safe oh. environment so <laughs> but he too yeah. is a rescue animal so that abandonment can get really pushed hard so we work hard to try them, get them through it as best we can, is all we can do. But so just tell them how many nights I'll be Yes, gone. let's see how she does while you're gone. It'll be good data to see how she does when you're gone. If that okay. wigs her out some, just again, just reach out to me if it looks like she's having a hard time and we'll clear things for her and tell her what's going on. Okay. All right. Well, she's done wonderful since we've gotten her home. So we're very appreciative of all you did for her. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Good. And but her energy feels really great right now. So yeah. She's, and for a 10-year-old St. Bernard, that's really good. <laughs> oh, you'd never know. I mean, she's out playing fetch. And, you know, yeah, she gets up a little bit slower than, you know, a younger dog. But other than that, she's got full energy. So she's making up for lost time. <laughs> yes, she is. Absolutely. <laughs> good. All right. Well, we are at the top of the hour, so sorry. Uh, um, I think Jen hopped off, so I don't see. Her. So we'll get. It, it, we can do more later. Anyway, so thank you all for participating. I'm going to stop sharing, and if you have any questions.